Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for a new episode of Bringing the Zoo to You here at Brookfield Zoo. My name is Manelia and I'm joined here with Adelina. We are both animal care specialists here at Brookfield Zoo. And we have an extra special guest here today. It's her Facebook debut. This is Aria. She is a green arasari. And a green arasari is a small toucan. And she looks very, very similar to a toucan, but she's a lot smaller. And they live in the rainforest. And a lot of animals in rainforests are very colorful. And you can see she is extremely colorful. She has blues and reds and greens, which gives her the name Green Arasari, because the back of her feathers are a deep, dark green. And she has this cute little red spot at the base of her tail feathers and then on her chest it's kind of like a neon yellow on her chest and her head is kind of a reddish brown and green arsaris are sexually dimorphic which means that the males and the females are slightly different in color if we were to have a male his head would be kind of a dark brown almost a black color and she is about 4.86 uh, grams. Uh, she is about, or, sorry, ounces. So she is actually about close to the weight of a baseball. So she's not very heavy at all, which is very important for birds. Um, birds can't be heavy if they're going to fly. And she does fly, but she's very comfortable on Adelina's hand. We have worked with her since she came to the zoo. We put a lot of training uh, time with her. So she takes food from us, we hand feed her, and she'll sit on her hands. Um, right now, her mouth is open, so she's a little, she's a little nervous. This is her first time Stage on Facebook. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and because of, unfortunately, the pandemic, we haven't been able to bring her out to meet a lot of new people. So this is actually part of her training. So she's doing really well, she's just kind of observing everything. Birds are very, very visual. They rely heavily on their eyesight. So she's looking around, checking everything out. And because we work with her, she's comfortable with us. So she knows what we look like and she's, you know, she's doing a really good job. Um, and so she's looking at the phone. She's looking at everyone <laughs> out there watching her. She's got a lot of personality, although right now she's not really showing it but she's very vocal um, in the rainforest where they come uh, from Northeast um, South America, like Venezuela and Guyana. They live in small groups. So they're very social birds and they live up high in the rainforest and they're just hopping along on tree to tree. And if uh, Lynette wants to guess what a green RSI would eat and give you a clue, not Fruit Loops. <laughs> Fruit Loops. That's thanks, um, Adelina. She had, came up with a really great joke. <laughs> that was good. Um, um, I would, I would guess she would eat something like nuts. Yes, or, actually yeah, they do. Hard, hard things because of that beak. Um, her beak actually is not like a parrot's beak, but she does. Oh, eat, really? Yeah, she does eat nuts, um, and she'll also eat fruits and insects and even small animals and eggs too. Huh. So they're omnivores. You wouldn't think that no. from her, but yeah, they'll eat all kinds of, all kind of yummy treats out there. And since they live up high in the trees in the tree canopy, um, they, they have to pull that fruit off of the trees. So if you notice, her beak is open, which is great. So you can see yeah. her beak is serrated. So that means it's kind of like a saw, like little sharp edges. And that helps her to pull all that fruit off the branches and twigs. And then she pops it into her mouth. So she eats them whole so she doesn't mash them. Sometimes she can. Um, what they do is just kind of cute. They have this little hook on their beak. So they'll grab a little like an animal or an insect and they'll whack it. They'll whack it against the branch. And it kind of ends up, you know, stunning the animal. And that way they can eat it whole. She does it with toys too. We give her bird toys and she'll play with them like she's kind of like whacking an insect or a small animal. 
which is pretty cute. Well, I would prefer Fruit Loops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would too. <laughs> uh, one of her favorite fruits is a blueberry. She loves blueberry, and we have right now with us some banana. She really likes banana. And right now she's a little, she's showing that she's a little nervous, so she's not really eating. Um, but normally she loves fruit. We give her fruit here at the zoo. We also give her a pelleted food, specially made for birds like her to give her all the nutrition that she needs um, to be nice and healthy, uh, keep her bones nice and strong. Um, and Adelina, you wanted some cool facts about her beak? Yeah, so um, there are some good uses that her beak has besides grabbing food. So she uses them like chopsticks to grab the fruits from the trees, um, but it actually works as like an air conditioning too for them, for the toucans. Um, since it has a bunch of like a long surface area, uh, mm. Toucans can, um, they have blood vessels in there, so they'll actually push some extra blood if they're a little hot to uh, increase the surface area that the blood is running through and it cools them down. Um, they don't have any feathers on their beak, so then it's exposed to like the nice wind and they uh, are actually able to cool down that way. So scientists have done tests where they will have like uh, an infrared camera on them and they can see that they are using that for um, thermal regulation. So that's pretty cool of their beak there. So it has lots of different uses and that's one of them. Wow, nice. I didn't know, I didn't Very know so much about her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so their beak is one third of their size. So it's a huge surface area and it's not covered with any feathers. Um, and so it's a really good useful tool that they mm -hmm. have. And it's actually really lightweight too. I mean, you'd think with a beak like that, it would be heavy, but it is actually um, only weighs one twentieth of their entire weight. Um, it's made of keratin like our nails and our hair, but it's actually, in the inside, it's like a spongy material, like a cork. Um, so it doesn't weigh very much at all, but it is pretty fragile. So they have to make sure they don't accidentally break it. Um, there are times where birds out there have broken their, toucans have broken their beaks and some scientists or facilities have made like prosthetics for their beaks and actually has worked pretty well for them. So we are in a special tent right now here in the ITW room. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So this is a huge room and we have big glass doors. And because she is a fully flighted bird, we don't want her to be startled by anything and fly off and accidentally run into the glass. And also we have a lot of areas where she can kind of perch up high and then it'd be very difficult for us to get her down. So this is kind of like a little smaller space <laughs> and a little more comfortable um, for her too so she doesn't feel, um, since they live in, you know, the rainforests are covered and that's where they feel safest. So she feels safer in a small space. Mm -hmm. I would like to circle back too to talking about the differences between the males and the females. Um, usually we think of males of a species being a lot more colorful. So is it the opposite with them? They're both colorful. The only difference really is just around their head. So where you see reddish brown um, feathers, mm -hmm. it's darker for the male. Gotcha. It's like a black, almost black. Gotcha. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, and that's pretty unique just mm -hmm. to green our asaris. Uh, most other toucans, the males and the females, look pretty much the same. Okay. Um, but that also means that they're pretty monogamous. They'll live in a group of a few birds, but when it comes to mating season, they will pick just one mate and stick with them for the entirety of the mating season. Yeah, and they co-parent. So males and females are both involved in raising the, raising the young. So they don't make um, their own nests. They actually find holes in the trees that were previously made by other animals like woodpeckers. And so they'll nest in there until um, the birds are ready to fledge, which takes um, almost about a month, a little over a month. And how many eggs will be in each clutch? Two to four. Mm -hmm. Are there other green arasaris here at Brookfield Zoo? Yes, I believe they're not on exhibit though. I think they are in Tropic World. I think they're, um, exhibit oh up as far as I know. Oh up in the top behind the I scenes. Think so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I could be wrong. 
You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Our birds get switched around yeah. all the time here. A lot here. of movement happens yep. around here. <laughs> yeah. Um, how many other birds are here at Wild Encounters? How many birds like her? No, just oh, just total? in general. Yeah. Well, if you count the parakeet aviary. Oh, gosh. Well, let's not count the parakeet aviary. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, about 20? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a collection of parrots. We have some yeah. birds of prey. Uh, but something cool that actually she shares with parrots are the structure of her feet. Oh. Um, she's a psychodactyl, which means her... Two toes point forward, two toes point back, um, and parrots have that, so her feet are very parrot-like. Um, but different, or a little bit more special for our saris, or toucans, is that she can actually perch on a branch that's like completely vertical. Yeah, she's a good jumper too. Yeah, you just saw her hop, that's what they do. They do a lot of hopping up in the tree, can't you? Oh, she took some banana. She's, she's warming up. She, yeah, she's warming up. So thank you guys for helping us train her today. Um, sometimes she catches, we have um, sweet peas here, sometimes she can catch them. And believe it or not, she's very good at it, even though her eyes are super far away from the tip of her beak, she has very good precision for catching things. So, wanna try? Let's try it. <laughs> she might not. Like she might not. Oh, so she kind of, she focuses on it. Yeah. You wanna catch? No. Oh, she, she almost, she almost tried. <laughs> One more time. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm not that warmed up yet. <laughs> she tried. That's good, girl. <laughs> but yeah, you notice when she's eating too, she kind of like uh, grabs the food and like just tosses it in the yeah. back of her throat. Oh, um, yeah. Because that bill is so long, so the food has uh, quite a little bit of to travel, but that's how uh, toucans will eat. They just kind of throw it back there. Mm -hmm. Now, how big is she compared to a toucan? Ooh, a toucan. Yeah, toucans are about two feet in length, so they're the biggest of the toucans. Uh, well, the toko toucan. Okay. So the toko toucan is the biggest. That's like the toucan Sam that we're uh, kind of familiar with. Again, now I'm wanting fruit loops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it could be about two feet in length, um, and she's the smallest of the toucans, um, and they're about 12 to 10 inches from like beak to tail. Okay. So she's the smaller size. So she's like little miniature. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, but she's full grown. This is as big as she's going to get. Yeah, so think of like a baseball. If you ever held a baseball, she's about that weight. She's very light. Uh, what else can we talk about? Um, we don't have to trim her beak. Her beak naturally grows like this, and she doesn't, and we don't have to do any kind of real maintenance with it. Um, but her nails, we do trim those nails because um, sometimes she. In the wild, they'd be like moving around a lot more than they would here. So they 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 grow just like our nails, and we do have to trim them. Is she very vocal? She's very vocal when she's in her in her home. Cause she she's made a couple little squeaking she noises does, here. Yeah, she makes like they're kind of like, yeah they're kind of like almost like purring sounds. Um, but she yeah she's being really quiet right now. But when she's in her home, that's the one thing I love about her. She's just very vocal. Um, uh, with people that she's familiar with. Mm. How is she different from a curl-crusted Arasari? Well, it's the look. <laughs> she's definitely, her feathers are straight and they don't curl. <laughs> They're flat against her body. Um, although she can puff them up, um, she likes to take baths to keep herself clean, keep her feathers clean, which is very cute. So we have a little bath inside our enclosure where she can uh, step into the water and take a bath. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining us on this episode of Bringing the Zoo to You. Uh, thank you your, for your support here at Brookfield Zoo. It really helps all our animals out, especially Aria. And thank you for your support again, and see you next time. <laughs>